8 o'clock tonight, the Bundys are back in hilarious all-new episodes of Married with Children. Then at 8.30, the Witches of Eastwick. With Scott Bevan and Gillian Whiting, this is National 9 News. Four men in court after a wild shootout at Salisbury. Push for all road accident victims to be tested for alcohol. Matt Hayden, back in Australia's One Day Side. Good evening. Four men have been charged with attempted murder after yesterday's dramatic shootout with police at a Salisbury drug company. The gang was the target of a joint operation mounted by Queensland and New South Wales Police and the National Crime Authority. Police believe the group was trying to steal morphine to manufacture heroin. They'd counted on the element of surprise. Instead, it was the four bandits who suddenly found themselves outnumbered and outgunned. After threatening staff, the armed gang was loading drugs and chemicals into the back of their vehicle when police moved in. I saw this, uh chap was all dressed in black and had a rifle and he was uh, shooting under the bridge. Three gang members quickly surrendered, a fourth ran off and opened fire. Staff at nearby businesses were lucky not to be caught in the crossfire. And, uh, next thing my supervisor came down and said we better get out of here because uh, there's police everywhere and they're chasing somebody so we just bolted. One bullet shattered a police car window leaving an officer with a grazed arm. Police returned fire, the gunman quickly gave up. The gang had been under surveillance, intelligence suggesting they were about to strike. The operation's success wasn't just confined to Brisbane. Late last night, police in Sydney raided homes in five suburbs, arresting two more men on drug and firearm offences. They also seized suspected stolen cars and weapons. Police say more arrests are likely. They will continue on and expect to interview a, uh, a number of other persons involved in the, uh, in the um, high-profile group. The four gang members appeared in court this morning charged with attempted murder and armed robbery. Paul Murphy, National 9 News. Police are investigating the death of a 28-year-old man after an altercation with hotel bouncers at Logan Home early this morning. William James Main had been refused entry to Aztec's nightclub at Fitzy's Tavern because he was wearing thongs. He struggled with five security staff and later collapsed. Ambulance officers applied CPR, but he died on the way to Logan Hospital. The incident uh, has been recorded on a security video, and uh, most of the information at this stage is coming from the video. It's understood the man had been placed in a straining hold just before he died. Police are awaiting the results of an autopsy before deciding whether to lay charges. The Queensland Government is likely to close a major loophole which has seen drink drivers escape prosecution, even when they've caused traffic accidents. Many have avoided blood alcohol tests by pretending to be unconscious. Hundreds of drink drivers are booked every year after causing accidents, but police believe hundreds more get away with it. They're not just people who are 0.06 or 0.07, they're people who are much higher. The State Government Travel Safe Committee's latest report recommends the laws be changed. It wants blood tests on all road accident victims, conscious or not. That's bad news for drink drivers who've pretended to be unconscious to avoid giving permission for blood tests. They are the people we want off our roads. They're grossly irresponsible. The report found up to 1,500 drink drivers are rotting the system every year to avoid being booked. But even now the loophole's been found, it'll be another four months before the laws can be changed in Parliament. Police say they're aware of the tricks drink drivers use and will be more vigilant than ever over Christmas. You'll be picked up by RBT or police or secondary if you're involved in a road incident, you'll face sore prosecution after your blood's taken. Under the proposal, blood samples taken up to four hours after an accident will be used as evidence. Accident victims who still refuse tests will be charged. Melanie Wendt, National 9 News. Violent storms have lashed several towns on the New South Wales-Victorian border, causing widespread damage. Large hailstones have been dumped on farming communities near Wangaratta and Yarrawonga. Heavy rain has also caused flash flooding. The worst hit town is Mulwala on the Murray River, where roofs have been ripped off. Emergency crews are now desperately trying to repair the damage and restore power. 
Federal police have broken a counterfeit ring in New South Wales. More than $35,000 in phony $100 bills have been seized in raids on the state's south coast. A machine gun, an automatic pistol and large amounts of cash and drugs were also found. Police say the fake notes were of a good quality and believe there are still plenty in circulation. Many have already been called legends, but today 100 Australians were given a promotion named as Living National Treasures. The list includes a who's who from all fields, from politics to sport, business to the arts. It wasn't surprising to read Don Bradman's name, but the hunt for other living treasures turned up some rare finds. On his Darling Downs property, the 89-year-old creator of the legendary R.M. Williams boots took the accolade in his stride. I suppose it's a great honour, but I, I, I hope it's made that way for the right reasons. I always feel that I'm a working man and... A bit embarrassed, really. Archbishop Peter Hollingworth summed up how many of those listed were feeling, and perhaps some who weren't. Bob Hawke was the only Prime Minister from the past 20 years not included, although his former wife Hazel was. So too was John Farnham representing the arts, and Walter Mickak, who's become the Australian face of humanity. It's a huge honour um, and in many ways I, I suppose I feel as though I'm standing up there taking that on behalf of Nanette and my, and my daughters. From the sporting field, Olympian Raylene Boyle. I don't think it's only the fact that I was an athlete who had a certain level of Olympic fame. I think it's probably because of the cancer situation I've been um, confronted with over the last 20 months. And tennis great Ken Rosewall. I'd take a little bit of ribbing over this. <laughs> it's, it's not a popularity poll. It's really about people voting for whom they think have made contributions to Australia. In a poignant note, one of the living treasures, Ted Matthews, the last original Anzac, died on Tuesday, aged 101. The list was compiled by the National Trust, with almost 10,000 ordinary Australians voting for who should be included. It's a very nice prize, but we've all got to remember that we're also very normal and ordinary Australians too. Karen Cooper, National 9 News. Buckingham Palace has denied reports that Prince William will attend school in Australia next year. It's been suggested the 15-year-old prince is set to follow in his father's footsteps and start the new school year at Timbertop in Victoria, one of Australia's most exclusive schools. We told uh, Buckingham Palace we're going with the story and they sort of denied. They didn't deny, they didn't confirm. The school also refused to comment on the claims, saying it's not able to discuss student lists. A spokeswoman for Prince Charles says William will continue his schooling in Britain. Still to come in the news, the jackal has his day in court. And the sick children amazing their doctors. I Eight o'clock tonight. Am I invisible? Can't ready. Possibly from Pluto. For a bit of slap. <laughs> And tickle the Bundy Bunch are back. Ooh, I'm getting all hot just thinking about it. Married with children, 8 o'clock tonight. Like your family to feel all their Christmases have come at once? Then shop somewhere a little different. Dick Smith Electronics. Look at this compact cinema surround system that gives huge sound for $499. Or this Citizen LCD colour TV for only $149. And at $19.95, these computer CDs make great gifts. And you could win the award-winning Kia Sportage four-wheel drive when you enter at Dick Smith Electronics. Right, everybody, all together. Like the gentlest tissue in the bathroom, you can issue why it's sob and sob and safest for sure. Sorbent's economical, its sales are astronomical. Buy Sorbent at your favourite store. If your bathroom's as old as this ad, win a $20,000 bathroom renovation thanks to thick, soft Sorbent. Details in Woman's Day. Yo, you seen this? Always just can call here and yak all day Saturday for no more than 20 bucks. I got friends there, nobody calling me. What's up with that? With Telstra's 0011 International, call the USA, New Zealand or the UK for no more than $20 a call and talk all day every Saturday till the end of the year. Don't worry, I'll call. Oh, Helena, no. What is it? Oh, we must get back. They'll yeah. be oh. us. Word's out, so maybe you should call. A reminder that for a limited time only, all new Daewoo's come with air conditioning and three years scheduled servicing. See the ad in this weekend's paper.
Christmas savings with a bonus. Spend $1,000 at the World Store this week and you'll receive two free flights to New Zealand. The World Store has $6 million worth of furniture and bedding for delivery right up to Christmas Eve. The World Store, open seven days. The Sunshine Coast has posted the first death on Queensland roads for the Christmas holiday period. An unidentified man was killed when his car left the Bruce Highway shortly before 3 o'clock this morning. The car hit a concrete culvert before coming to rest in a creek. A spark ignited the fuel line and started a fire. And this is a, you know, a tragic start to our school holidays for the Sunshine Coast. Witnesses say the car was speeding when it passed other traffic just before it crashed. The young woman who phoned TV superstar Bill Cosby and threatened to tell the world she was his illegitimate daughter was today jailed. Autumn Jackson demanded $50 million to keep the secret. She was convicted of extortion instead. Cosby admitted to paying for Autumn Jackson's education and having a one-night stand with her mother. He said, did you make love to the woman? And the answer was yes. Um, are you the father? No. She was jailed for two years and two months, yet still believes Cosby's her father. Carlos the Jackal, once the world's most wanted man, has had his first day in court. The Venezuelan-born revolutionary is accused of killing two French policemen and a Lebanese informer. He faces at least 30 years in jail. His arrival at court paid homage to his terrifying reputation. Carlos the Jackal, once the most wanted terrorist in the world, surrounded by heavily armed French police, about to face his first ever trial for murder. For years, this was the face of Carlos, real name Ilyich Ramirez Sanchez, feared around the world. Terrorist and assassin, he once boasted during the 70s and 80s he'd single-handedly killed more than 80 people. Always flamboyant, this is him in Vienna in 1975, on the left here, hugging one of 11 oil ministers he'd just kidnapped. But this was Carlos just three years ago at a wedding in the Sudan. Shortly after these pictures were taken, French agents pounced and abducted him, returning him to Paris for this trial. Today he faced three murder charges in a case expected to last just a week. If convicted, he'll be jailed for life, never to face justice in the dozens of other countries where he peddled his deadly trade. Daniel Blyde, National 9 News. Children who have been told they would never walk are astounding doctors by discarding their wheelchairs. Trials underway in Melbourne are giving youngsters with severe bone disorders the chance of a normal life. Alex Jalul has never walked. Born with a severe bone disease, his brittle body cannot withstand even the slightest pressure without crumbling. But new treatment underway at the Royal Children's has made his bones stronger. For the first time, Alex is able to stand without fracturing his fragile bones. My wife and I couldn't believe it. As he gains strength, doctors expect him to walk without support. I'm trying to make it easier for my brothers and my parents, so I don't have to keep asking them to help me. And I feel good about that. A feeling 10-year-old Danny Fox, suffering from a different bone disease, has also enjoyed. He's undergone six drug transfusions over the past two years with spectacular results. Some of these children have begun to get up and practice walking and a few of them have been able to take a few steps and are learning to become independent. This is not a new drug. It's been used for the past 15 years to treat osteoporosis in postmenopausal women. But this is the first time trials have been carried out on children. It's very exciting. I think that it needs to be tempered with um, concerns for whether this sort of treatment will be a totally safe as well as efficacious treatment. With Christmas nearing, Alex says he has only one wish. I wish I could walk and do other stuff that other children can do. Belinda Byrne, National 9 News. Sport now with Chris Bombalis and Bomber, Matt Hayden gets a one-day call-up. Scott Matt the Bat takes Tom Moody's place in the Australian team. The cricket is next and a Socceroos victory comes one game too late. He's going to be a goal for Australia and it is beautifully placed. It's going to be Tom Moody's first 
On a current affair, Bastard, the welfare chief living the high life. This is my social responsibility. You pay his dole check while his company rakes in the dollars. Do you actually want paid employment? Of course not. But how can he get away with it? One of the most slimy people in the industry. Plus the Queenslander who sued the pub where he got drunk. I just don't remember. Now he's won the case that could change our lives forever. It'll open the floodgates. And our misbehaving pollies, the addicts even our kids can't believe. Disgusting. When Nissan presents a current affair. Can you make the world seem brighter and help kick away those blues? Can you make your dreams come true? You can on a cannon, you can do. You can on a cannon, you can do. You can on a cannon. Christmas at the Ferguson's is a traditional affair. But for the Choi's, it's a Chinese banquet. For the Pedersons, Christmas takes on a European flavor, while the Logans simply throw a prawn on the barbie. Fact is, Christmas is a little different for everybody. But when you ask what's to eat, there's every chance it'll be from Australia's Woolworths. Merry Christmas from all the fresh food people. If you switch your car, home, and contents insurance to NRMA, we'll give you our new multi-policy discount. You can save an average of $130 based on our average premiums. Call Australia's largest car and home insurer on 132 132 to find out how NRMA can SAVE the day. Tonight's sports report proudly brought to you by the Optus Caraday Giveaway. Good evening. After the bitter disappointment of missing the World Cup finals, Australia has made an impressive start in Soccer's Confederation Cup in Saudi Arabia. While Brazil accounted for the hosts 3 0, the Socceroos put on a solid performance to beat Mexico 3 1. Australia earmarked this tournament to showcase its quality. But Mexico fired the first salvos. Zelko Kalitz needed to spread his lengthy frame to deny the Central Americans. Fabulous strike and a stubborn piece of goalkeeping. From Ranked 11th in the world, the Mexicans' mix of young players and experienced hands under a brand new coach gave them territorial control. Yet just before half time, an unlikely lead for the Socceroos through Mark Viduca's poaching. Just seconds after the break, Ned Zelic almost doubled the lead before Alex Tobin had a close-range chance. Midfield control saw Australia go two up on the hour. Stan Lazaridis fed John Aloisi, who slipped past two defenders before firing. Nervous times for Kalitz as Mexico pressed forward. The keeper then brought down Jesus Ramirez and Luis Hernandez halved the deficit. Mexico searched for an equaliser, but the Socceroos embarrassed one of next year's World Cup qualifiers when Craig Foster crossed perfectly in the final minute. Charles Christian, National 9 News. Matthew Hayden is back in the Australian one-day team. The Queensland opener received his call-up last night after Tom Moody strained a hamstring playing for Western Australia. But I'm looking forward to the challenge of the next little bit. Uh, if I get my opportunity tonight, I, I really want to take it with both hands. In another change ahead of tomorrow's day-night clash at the SCG, Michael Kasprowitz is also back in the Australian side, swapping places with Simon Cook, who will play for the A's. New Zealand's batsmen have set Queensland a hefty target in the day-night match at the Gabba. Matt Horne top-scored for the Kiwis. Chasing 267 for victory, the Bulls' batting lineup is without Matthew Hayden, Jimmy Ma and Stuart Law.
After winning the toss, Nathan Astall got the Kiwis off to a flyer, hammering four successive boundaries off Greg Rowell. The lanky paceman preferring to let the eyeball do his talking instead of the leather one. It was left to Brendan Creevy and Wade Seckham to exact revenge on Astall. The opener out for a quick fire 21. Creevy struck again, Brian Young providing catching practice for Scott Muller. At 2 for 45, Matt Horn then proceeded to take full advantage of an understrength Bulls attack. Combining with skipper Stephen Fleming for a 182 run stand, the pair produced some punishing stroke play. Horn racing to his century off just 106 balls. Scoring at more than five and over, Horn slashing knock ended when stand in skipper Martin Love produced this fielding masterpiece. The final overs saw the customary flurry of wickets. Twos run out for 11. McMillan came and went cheaply, while Fleming calmly piloted his way to an unbeaten 95, and the Kiwis an impressive 5 for 266 from their 50 overs. Ben Dobson, National 9 News. South Africa has begun its preparation for the Boxing Day test with a four-day match against Tasmania in Hobart. The Tigers had little trouble with the tourists' attack, finishing the day well placed at 3 for 278. A spectacular assembly of cricketing talent last night celebrated the 20th anniversary of a season that changed the game forever. World Series cricket began in 1977 and many of those who made it happen gathered to remember the game's extraordinary change. This was a roll call for the heroes of a cricketing revolution. To be back in Australia again is, for me, unbelievable. They came from around the world to reminisce and relive their roles in the Great Divide. Well, Yanni, look about 23. Uh, thank you. 20 years ago, Kerry Packer and John Cornell decided to put cricket under lights, signing up dozens of the world's best in defiance of the game's establishment. I think we all hoped that it would be a parting then coming together again, which it was, and I think that's, that's worked out well. But it was pretty tough times at the time. Certainly what Kerry did for, for us and keeping cricket alive in South Africa was uh, brilliant. Last night took the 200 guests on a nostalgic trip through Channel 9's Sydney studios. The dinner celebrated not the two years of conflict, but the peace that followed. We started off having a war with the cricket board. We ended up being friends with them, and between them, them and us, I think we've ended up doing a service for cricket, which has been good for the game, good for the individuals, and good for the general public. Greg Turner has shot a one under par 71 to lead into the final round of the New Zealand Open in Auckland. The Kiwi leads Australia's Lucas Parsons after the New South Welshman returned to 73. Brett Partridge and Craig Parry head the others. Turner began his day's work in promising fashion, a birdie on the first. The shot of the tournament followed soon after as Turner displayed his knowledge of the lie of the land. That putt may have been a gimme, this one definitely wasn't. <laughs> Young Aussie Ben Ferguson then decided to pop into the 19th for a quick one. Ooh, over in the hospitality stands there. And despite a disappointing day in comparison to yesterday's 65, Parsons still very much in the hunt. In tennis, John Lloyd's through to the final of the Champions Tour in Sydney. He'll play the winner of tonight's All-American clash between Jimmy Connors and Tim Wilkerson. Andrew Slack, National 9 News. Mick Dittman and Chief De Beers were the toast of punters today, combining to win the first leg of Doombin's Triple Crown, the AWA Stakes. In recording a three and three quarter length victory, the Chief broke Prunder's record for the most wins at Doombin. It was another masterly ride by the man dubbed the Enforcer. He had the Chief poised in the straight and the six-year-old made light of his 59 kilo impost and the outside barrier. Quiet Dipman said go and he's exploded away. It's all over. Chief De Beers raced away for Mulligua Celestial Choir. We are looking at the greatest Doombin horse in history. Look at him go. The Chief bolted and he won by four lengths to Mulligua and Celestial Choir. He never gave them a look in.
The official margin for the 13 to 4 favourite was three and three quarter lengths. It was the Chief's 16th win. All of his successes have been at Doombin, and today he went one better than Prunda. At Rose Hill, two year old Philly Catnipped confirmed her place as favourite for next month's Magic Millions with a record win in this afternoon's prelude. But it's all Catnipped as they get near home. I don't think she fancies the whip too much, but she's going to win it well, and Catnip beat traditional. In Perth, Mystic Chantry fought back to win the WA Oaks. It's Mystic Chantry. King's got the persuader on her. She's finding plenty. She's beaten off Magdalena. Laura Lane goes to third, but it's Mystic Chantry wins the Oaks. That's it in Nine Sport, and I'm looking forward to the cricket tomorrow and Matt the Bat. Indeed. Well, at least Australia can't lose. We're on a winner. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bomber. Weather and Fipsy next. Then birthday well wishes for old blue eyes. You know that it's worth every treasure on earth. Return to the Willows with your favourite characters in a brand new animated adventure. Toad's infernal contraption! The premiere of the Willows in Winter, next on Nine. Hi there, I'm David Rain. Welcome to the Optus Car Day Christmas Countdown. You could win a Volkswagen Golf CL in time for Christmas. Optus are giving away a car a day for 24 days. All you have to do is connect to Optus Mobile Digital before December 24, and the sooner you connect, the more chances you'll have to win. What a car. And there's 24 to be won. Ah, that'll be tonight's winner. Congratulations, Mrs Annie Belton from Liverpool, New South Wales. You've just won a Volkswagen Golf. You can be a winner too. Just connect to Optus Mobile Digital before Christmas. But do it now, because the sooner you connect, the more chances you'll have of owning a new Volkswagen Golf. What a car to get away in. Yes! Today's Over the Moon offer is the Optus One for All mobile package. One monthly access fee of $30 lets you connect up to three mobile phones on the One for All rate plan. And you could win a Volkswagen Golf. Yes. Not only does this one tonner come with power steering, a standard across its whole range, it also comes at a crowd-pleasing price. No wonder they call it the Bravo. But then again, that's Mazda. From Sharp, the world leaders, comes the widest range of organisers and personal digital assistants. And soon, Windows CE in full colour. It's another powerful connection. If you switch your car... ..home... And contents insurance to NRMA will give you our new multi-policy discount. You can save an average of $130 based on our average premiums. Call Australia's largest car and home insurer on 132 132 to find out how NRMA can SAVE the day. 8.30 tonight. Focus, focus. Four of Hollywood's best in the performance of a lifetime. I want a little respect! Jack Nicholson, Cher, Susan Sarandon and Michelle Pfeiffer. The Witches of Eastwick tonight, 8.30 on Channel 9. Weather time now. Despite some cloud around the southeast today, it was a little warmer than yesterday. But temperatures were still below average, 19 to 27 degrees in Brisbane, a top of 26 on the Sunshine and Gold Coasts. At the moment, humidity 65% and it's 25 degrees. The cloud photo shows some scattered showers and storms over western Queensland. They're sitting ahead of that massive trough across central Australia. Tomorrow, that trough should move steadily east, bringing storms across the state and a line from Mount Isa to Toowoomba late in the evening. Thunderstorms are also expected in Darwin, Canberra and Sydney tomorrow, with showers in Melbourne. In north Queensland, mainly fine, with showers in Townsville and a storm in Mount Isa. Further south, showers for Bundaberg and Meribra, fine and hot for Rocky. Mainly fine for the southeast, with a chance of a storm in Toowoomba. The official bureau forecast for Brisbane, fine with winds freshening in the afternoon and a possible late storm, 18 to 28 degrees. And looking ahead, storms are forecast again for Monday, then cooler with showers on Tuesday and fine for Wednesday. And with the weekend conditions on the beach in the bay, here's Fipsy. Thanks, Gillian. Warm and sunny on the beach here at Mooloola Bar today, and it looks like another good day coming our way for tomorrow. On the Gold Coast, the swell was still quite big, but a little lumpy, with the wind having a slight easterly influence. For Sunday, I recommend the spit through to surface and a for the board riders. 
This intriguing creature washed up at Burley today is a sea snake, and it's not uncommon to see them in rough sea conditions. Please, if you find one, don't touch it as they are highly venomous. The rain has brought the estuary fish on the chew, with Jim Versace catching a few nice whiting and a brim in the Narang River today. On the Sunshine Coast, Alexandra Headlands was a pick surf spot today with waves to just over a metre. For Sunday, I recommend Sunshine Beach, the Pocket at Kiwana and Kings Beach for a surf or swim. It's still a bit rough to fish offshore, but this happy lady caught a few nice brim and a tasty parrotfish from the Kiwana boat ramp this week. The coastal waters forecast is northwest to northeast winds 15 to 20 knots with seas to 1.5 metres, and for Moreton Bay, north to northeast winds 10 to 20 knots with seas to 1 metre. I'd like to wish everyone a very pleasant Sunday. Hollywood legend Frank Sinatra today turns 82. But in contrast to the wild parties of his Brat Pack days, this birthday was spent quietly at home with his family. Some fans sent greetings the traditional way, but more than 100,000 used email and got a response the same way. Know that it's worth every treasure on earth to be young at heart. Sinatra hasn't been seen in public since his heart attack almost a year ago, but friends say there's no truth to the rumours that he's near death. It's good to hear. He's fabulous, isn't he? Great voice. Great mm. voice. That's our news for this Saturday. We'll see you tomorrow night. Good night. Good night. The Queensland Reporters. All it takes is one hand and you're out. These children don't have anything much at all. You know what's going to happen today? Yes. Their profits will be literally devoured. A Current Affair, 6.30, weeknights on 9. Christmas at the Fergusons is a traditional affair. But for the Choys, it's a Chinese banquet. For the Pedersons, Christmas takes on a European flavour, while the Logan simply throw a prawn on the barbie. Fact is, Christmas is a little different for everybody, but when you ask what's to eat, there's every chance it'll be from Australia's Woolworths. Merry Christmas from all the fresh food people. Tonight, the Bundys are back in hilarious all-new episodes of Married with Children. Then at 8.30, The Witches of Eastwick. This program brought to you with Christmas greetings from the Whitman Sampler. The chocolate...